Well, the interviews, they're over at the White House, and a short list of three people, were, were being told, remain as potential Supreme Court picks by President Trump. He's set to announce the final decision at 9 p.m. Eastern this upcoming Monday night. And Democrats, of course, are doing everything in their power to whip up their base, no matter who the choice is. The ri ch choice is the resistance. It must continue. Joining us now with the latest is Fox News correspondent Kristen Fisher. Kristen, good evening. Hey, Pete. Well, President Trump told reporters on board Air Force One tonight that his shortlist has shrunk to four, and he thinks that he's narrowed it down to two or three finalists. Now, our sources tell Fox News that those finalists are three appellate court judges, all of whom are widely regarded to be constitutional conservatives. They are Brett Kavanaugh from the D.C. Circuit, the Sixth Circuit's Raymond Kethledge, and Amy Coney Barrett of the Seventh Circuit. Now, Kavanaugh is kind of the steady Washington insider. The 53-year-old sits on the same powerful court that served as a stepping stone for three current Supreme Court justices, as well as the late Antonin Scalia. He clerked for retiring Justice Kennedy, and he has deep ties to his former boss, President George W. Bush. Another former Kennedy clerk, Judge Raymond Kethledge. The 51-year-old is known for being a, a bit of a loner. He's less high profile and has less of a judicial record than Kavanaugh, but he's also a lot less controversial, which could help him get confirmed, help him get through the Senate. And then there's Amy Coney Barrett, the only female finalist, we believe. She has seven children. She clerked for the late Justice Antonin Scalia, and she's a devout Catholic. But her writings on overturning judicial precedent have raised a red flag with a very critical Republican senator, Susan Collins, who fears that she might overturn Roe v. Wade. Now, President Trump says he hopes to make his decision by Sunday. Then on Monday, a big primetime announcement at the White House, something he made official during that rally tonight in Montana. Listen here. And if you turn in Monday at 9 o'clock, I think you're going to be extremely happy with the selection, right? I want to thank Justice Kennedy for his lifetime of truly distinguished service. And he had confidence in me. He left because he said, you're going to pick somebody great. But Democrats say no one on the president shortlist is great. They're now putting the pressure on two key Republican senators, Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins. One liberal group is planning to spend millions, millions of dollars on advertising and activism in the senator's home states, Alaska and Maine, which is the exact same strategy that they used to help defeat the Republican effort to repeal Obamacare last year. But of course, Pete, this is going to be a much more difficult fight for the Democrats to win. You're right. Pete, some precedent there. Kristen, thank you very much. Appreciate it. As we mentioned, Democrats, the throw in the kitchen sink at President Trump's Supreme Court candidates. None more than at Judge Amy Coney Barrett. <laughs> you can't put it any other way. An incredibly qualified U.S. Court of Appeals judge who is a devout Catholic and a mother of seven children. The left's hypocrisy on her is so thick you could choke on it. Joining us now with reaction is Kerry Severino, policy director of the Conservative Judicial Crisis Network and a former clerk for Justice Clarence Thomas, along with attorney and radio talk show host Leo Terrell. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Kerry, let me start with you. So the criticism of Amy Barrett and knowing how accomplished she is, is that, well, she may be just too devout of a Catholic, yet the left has, you know, usually sees a qualified female candidate, and especially someone who's already been confirmed with 55 votes, as someone who would be, yet again, breaking the glass ceiling. Why the resistance to Amy? Well, this is really ridiculous because under our Constitution, there is no religious test for office, and that's what they're trying to do here. What I think is happening is you're seeing people like a Senator Feinstein who are very threatened by an accomplished, articulate, but conservative woman because that really puts the lie to their identity politics. She does not toe their line and their feminist idea of what a woman should be, and she understands how to defend her position. So I think that's someone they feel very threatened by, and that's why we saw the hard attack on her during her confirmation hearings with that, that famous, but so strange line, the dogma lives loudly within her. Sure. Um, you know, that'll, that'll go down in history, and now it might go down in history as the beginning of a Supreme Court justice's career. Well, yet she was still confirmed with 55 votes. Leo, before I go to you, we're going to let Amy Coney uh, Barrett speak for herself. She talked, spoke to a group in Jacksonville, Florida. This is what she said about interpreting the Constitution. Listen. To say, I want to appoint someone who's pro-life, or I want to appoint someone whose primary focus is protecting minority rights, though the candidates are talking to their bases and talking to the electorate and saying, 
signal, I'm going to put people on the court who share your policy preferences. As I was saying before, I think that's not the right qualification for a justice. I mean, we shouldn't be putting people on the court that share our policy preferences. We should be putting people on the court who want to apply the Constitution. Applying the Constitution, Leo, what, what do you take issue with there? We shouldn't uh, uh, put people on there who will uh, adopt or feel, believe in the same policy. Let me tell you, have you read about this woman? I've read her before I came on your show. Mm -hmm. This woman does not believe in stare decisis. Carrie, you know what that means? She doesn't believe in established law. She is telling people well, that she has no problem overturning. No, no, very bad. Uh, uh, no, excuse me, with all due respect, I don't think Roe versus Wade is a bad law. It's been on the books for about 45 years. But this, if you want to be honest, she is talking about overturning established law. That scares me as a lawyer. And Kerry, you didn't mention that. She also said in a speech that lawyers should have a high, higher calling to God. God has nothing to do with the law. This woman is scary. Very scary because she's a threat to overturning established law. Kerry and Pete, Jay, Pete, I hope you talk about those items because well, Kerry, that's dangerous. Well, you read, if I, I'm, as I'm sure many you did, like many Americans, looking at the Declaration of Independence yesterday. Of course, our founders believed in God, believed in nature's God, uh, and we've there's been you would acknowledge, Leo, there've been plenty of laws in this country that were on the books for 45 years that should have never been on the books in the first place. So take Roe v. Wade as an example, Kerry. You know there there are a yes. lot of folks who look at jurisprudence on the left and the right and say that the right found there in Roe v. Wade, uh, it really, they really had to bend over backwards to find that, that right to privacy within the Constitution. I believe it was penumbras formed by emanations on Roe v. Wade. Carrie, can you honor the Constitution without being ideological? Absolutely, and that's what Amy Coney Barrett was talking about. It's not about finding someone who's going to give you a laundry list of preferences you want achieved. Every justice on the Supreme Court agrees that there are times when you have to overturn a law that w or a, a ruling that was incorrectly decided. If we didn't have that, we would still have the horrible Dred Scott case here, finding that, that oh, black don't, don't Americans that. could be slain. Don't, don't, don't play Those games. Are it is correct don't, don't to overturn that. precedents that are incorrect. That's a red herring. Why is that a red okay, Let me just ask you point blank. Hey, red, okay, Roe v. Wade, tell me right now on national television, bad decision, tell me right now. Tell all the pro-choice Republicans, moderate Republicans. Tell me right now on national TV. A lot of people believe it was a bad TV, decision. Plenty of people, I'll bad sit here and say uh, that Lawrence, it was a lot, Go ahead, I'll let you answer it yourself. Lauren Strong, okay. President Obama's uh, legal advisor, a Harvard law professor, constitutional law te I want your textbook opinion. author. He thinks it is not. It is not a law that a, a, a president that is a, a good quality president. That, but the the question here is very different. I don't think this justice is going to be of the vote to overturn Roe versus Wade because the middle justice, the swing vote is now Justice Chief Justice John Roberts. I think he is much harder to predict, and I have no idea what he will do in this case. Hey, Leo, this hey, is hey, really a distraction. Leo, Leo, there's from, a lot of people in this country that my believe question, Pete? Roe v. Wade is terrible and abortion is a sin on this country. That's, there's a lot of people that legitimately hold that policy view. There's also a lot of people, including my professor at Princeton University, Robbie George, who, could, who pointed out many times that the decision of Roe v. Wade, whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, was, was judicial activism at its finest. You know, this Pete, respectfully, is, is, when, when, Carrie, when, Carrie, when Carrie uses Dred Scott as an analogy, she insults the intelligence of every viewer. Now, you know, why? Pete, since 1973, all, all the pre current administration, well, Republicans and Democrats, hair. legislation has acknowledged, has acknowledged Roe v. Wade. And this judge is, is hell-bent on overturning Roe v. Wade. She should not be nominated. No, well, you're making it a single issue. I think the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, religious liberty, government overreach, the Tenth Amendment. It's a big issue. A woman's right to Amendment. choose? Of course it's a big issue, and it's one of the things that could come before the court. Are you saying it's not a legitimate policy position to believe that maybe it could be decided at the state level? You know, I I'm think telling all of this you that this, this judge <laughs> should believe in stare decisis. Don't you believe that, Carrie? Can you just I, say yes or no? It's very simple. I, I absolutely yes believe no. in stare decisis, but no principles okay, of stare decisis good. say that every case, once decided, never gets overturned. No, zero yeah. justices in the Supreme Court believe that. This is all a distraction. These are, are scare tactics used against Justice O'Connor, Justice Kennedy, Justice Souter. They were saying they would be the vote to overturn Roe versus Wade. Those were the three votes that upheld Roe versus didn't. Wade in the Planned Parenthood yes. case. It's a distraction from the real principles we're talking about here, which is, is this someone who's going to Look at the law for first and foremost. Look at the Constitution first well, and foremost. I'll tell you, Amy Barrett, uh, unlike many preview. people, has, has I, I, written I, I, clearly. One more big comment. 
The she very, very important her comment. I read one of her speeches. I read one of her speeches, and she said, "I didn't understand this as a lawyer." She told a group of lawyers that we as lawyers have a higher calling to God. Can well, you I explain that to me? Why is she injecting religion? I don't I, know what I that means. I, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Independence. I think our framers may have oh, said that too. Here we go too. again. She is here so we go unique, again, though. Though. Here we go again. Back she, to she's our unique that she's principles. written that. And she has said specifically, if her moral beliefs conflicted with her role as a judge, she said she would recuse herself. What else can you ask? She says specifically, and, I'm not Karen, going to substitute no, my I moral think, beliefs I think for the this law. Is the in, law comes first. Indicative of the fact, these are going to be some confirmation hearings, no matter who is chosen, that will be must-see mm -hmm. TV. A good debate. Carrie Leo, thank you for your time tonight. Appreciate Great it. Debate. Thank you. You got my it. Place. Well, is the Democratic Party sowing the seeds of its own destruction? We'll explain right after this brief commercial break.